can't buy a bow. I can't buy arrows. I can't train range. I can't fish for food. I don't have space. I literally can't cast spells. What's the most insane thing I could accomplish on this account? I'm gonna go for it. I've noticed that the longer I play RuneScape, the more psychotic and masochistic my playstyle gets over time. I locked myself in a swamp for three years and 5,000 hours of my life. My current series unlocks tiles one at a time for every 1,000 XP I gain. And at first glance, you might not fully understand just how ridiculous today's concept is. It's an idea I've been sitting on for a year now, playing RuneScape without trading, without banking, and with only one inventory slot. One slot determines your entire landscape of possibility. It's your whole lifeline. You have nothing else. Most actions in this game require two inventory slots to do. Fletching a log, catching a fish, making a potion, buying an item from a shop two inventory slots required. So how in the hell does an account like this function? Can you even play RuneScape like this? Unfortunately, the answer is yes. One year ago, I reached out to the creator of RuneLight. I wanted to know if a plugin could be made for this challenge. An inventory has 28 slots. I didn't just want to fill my inventory with 27 items and be like, hey guys, I'm only going to use this one slot. No, I wanted this to feel real. I wanted 27 unusable, undroppable spaces, clearly visually represented. The inventory interface is one of the oldest interfaces in this 22 year old game. And at the time, coding the plugin just didn't seem like it was possible. But with the rapid development of RuneScape plugin tech, one year later, it's been done. So with a 300 hour grind that I'm currently doing on my Talman account, I'm being put in the perfect position to do something stupid on the side, and here I am. Feeling like a kid again, waking up on Christmas morning because I'm about to feel truly helpless on RuneScape for the first time in a long time. But first, a quick word from our sponsor. Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. I was listening to Un- yourself by Gary John Bishop. He's teaching me to be my best self, to stop the excuses, to realize my life for what it is. It's my recent addition to my Audible library that I've been building up for the last three plus years. Audible has been on the channel a million times and for good reason. Just like how farming on RuneScape is considered a passive skill, maybe you've heard that before, educating and enjoying yourself through audiobooks is the same thing. I listen to audiobooks during so many different things in my life, while at the gym, in the car, playing RuneScape especially, I do a lot of that. Whatever grind I may be doing, I'm always trying to listen to something that will make me better, smarter, or just straight up entertain me. The Audible library is massive. I promise you there's something on here for you, even if you're not into educational stuff like I am. You can find something entertaining, relaxing, thrilling, whatever you want, really. And if you're not into audiobooks, there's plenty of podcasts and Audible originals on here that you literally will not find anywhere else. You can start your free 30-day trial today by going to audible.com slash settled or just by texting settled to 500-500. Thank you so much to Audible for sponsoring. This is the best worst name for a character ever. I know exactly what Richard Tape should look like. <laughs> if the coach had just put me in fourth quarter, god damn, we would have won state. This plugin is so good, man. I can't interact with any of these spaces. I am 1000% stuck and there's no chance of me using a second inventory slot for anything. Such an incredible plugin. Oh, a tile man in the wild, huh? Richard Tape is watching you. Okay, first order of business. What happens when I try to claim my free runes here? Ooh, so where where do the air runes go? They're, I thought they'd be on the floor, but I literally just don't receive them. What happens if I drop the mine runes and try to claim? Nothing, I literally just don't get any air runes. That's so interesting. Mine runes buy for one coin, but oh my God, I can't sell them, I forgot. I don't have a second inventory slot to receive the coins. I can't even sell the runes for anything. If that's not the epitome of this account and its future, I don't know what is. This is gonna be rough. I mean, I can't even like truly train magic in any way unless I got an air staff. If I got an air staff, I could in theory cast air spells only. I know what you're thinking, okay? What can we even accomplish with this? The goal I decided to set has a lot of obstacles. Richard Tape's adventure will only end when he achieves a fire cape. Yes, I see many problems with this goal. There's 
there's one glaring problem. Obviously, I have one inventory slot. There's no room for food or prayer potions. Execution has to be completely flawless. I'll be able to take one thing in with me to get me through 63 waves of the fight caves. But there's problems way beyond that. I mean, I don't know how I'm gonna train range yet. I do have some parts of this plan, which is why in the first episode of this terrifying adventure, we're gonna kill a boss, a particular boss. It's time to get ready. I want to set this account up for success, so the first thing I'm gonna do is head over to Edgeville. We're gonna take the lever, teleport ourselves over to Artie, and then we can start setting ourselves up for an amazing beginning. If someone actually kills me in the first three seconds that I'm in the wilderness on this account, congratulations, that's all I can really say. We seem to be safe. Richard lives another day. The most impactful thing you can do at the beginning of an account, just get 30 agility. It'll make your energy recharge 62% faster. 30 agility, that's it. I need to take care of the essentials first. I'm gonna knock out these agility levels so that I have a good baseline for everything else that I plan to do. Level 10 agility. Back to Lumbridge we go. Time to run the drained rooftop course until 20 agility. I'll see you in about half an hour, I think. Boom, 20 agility down. I uh, didn't pick up any marks of grace for kind of obvious reasons. There's no way I'm gonna save up enough for a piece. I'm curious, what happens if I try to claim the bow and then can I still get the arrows from this? Oh, see, she gives me the arrows. The magic tutor doesn't give you a second chance to get the other item. Okay, so I can kind of start my range training this way. It's not gonna be great, but I can at least get some XP in by claiming the training bow and arrows every 30 minutes. I just don't see a way of doing a fire cape on this account that isn't with a range build. Like how else will I possibly get a fire cape other than figuring out the range problem? I unfortunately could not get 10 GP from the goblins so I'm just gonna have to run all the way around if I want to get into Alcarid. The final tightrope in my training. 30 agility completed, took about two hours, but now I have an amazing baseline. 62% faster energy recharge rate. I can do anything now. I'm gonna head back over to Lumbridge because I need to get a little stronger for what I'm doing next. Let's quickly claim a training sword and shield from this guy. I don't wanna focus on melee too much on this account, but at the same time, it's gonna be my most reliable thing because it doesn't require ammo or runes to work, so I can actually just kill things with melee. So I'm gonna get these stats up a bit higher. The focus right now is on survivability. It's gonna help me a lot with what I'm doing next. It would actually be so cool to get a beginner clue scroll from these goblins and try to complete it. Uh, the odds are not great. Also, I'll be burying pretty much every bone I can get. For clue scrolls in general on this account, I will only be able to do steps that have me search something or talk to someone. Anything that requires digging, I won't be able to do because I won't be able to hold the clue scroll and the spade in my inventory. Massive development on the account. 10 strength. There we go. Five attack and five defense. Well, I'm gonna have to drop these 10 coins that I worked very hard for because we're gonna do a little quest. Probably one of very, very few quests that I can actually complete on this account. I'm serious. There's like no quest that I can complete on this account. 99% of them require two plus inventory slots, but the restless ghost, baby, this quest doesn't. This is like one of nine that I can complete. So it'll give me a great boost to my prayer, which I'm really desperately gonna need. Ghost became lit achieved. Under absolutely no circumstance am I fighting you, I am running away. It may not seem like much, but uh, prayer training with one inventory slot, really not great. So you know what? I'll happily take my nine prayer, almost 10, uh, because prayer training is what we're doing next, and it's gonna be bizarre with one inventory slot. This is why I wanted some survivability. Throughout every scenario I will put this account through, my health is all the health I have. I'm not gonna have anything to heal with like 99% of the time, which is also why I'm heavily prioritizing the prayer grind because I need access to overhead prayers as soon as physically possible. If I wanna kill a boss by the end of this episode, this is the most important thing I have to do. By the way, if I hit a million subscribers in 2023, I'll be releasing the most borderline psychotic RuneScape series ever made. So if you wanna see that, subscribe. We have arrived at the Boneyard. Yo, we have an iron scimitar here. I completely forgot forgot about this massive upgrade for me. Hello. You freaking knew I'd be getting massive upgrades coming to the boneyard. This is the one pair of big bones that I'm going to be after. This place is a little scary with uh, no food, also 10 prayer. Oh, uh, but yeah, I think I just have to do this extremely slowly. I have to hop worlds and just 
bury one bone at a time. If I do this grind entirely by hopping worlds and burying bones, I'm gonna have to bury 3,000 big bones in order to get 43 prayer. Oh no. See, this is what makes this grind way longer than it should be as well, is every single time I get hit, I'm just gonna have to chill back here and wait for my health to regen. So this is probably like a 13 or 14 hour grind. It's, it's not, um, it's nothing to scoff at for something really early on the account. Oh my god, is that a six mind rune spawn there? That's so good. Wait, what? I have a feeling that's gonna be really important. That's that's actually such a good discovery. Sitting here waiting for my health to regenerate has given me a lot of time to think, and I might have an idea on how to speed this up because I would love to do this way faster than 15 hours, trust me. These rats have a 1 in 15 chance to drop a looting bag, and I have a theory. Ooh, there we go, looting bag. Let's see if this works. Looting bags only work in the wilderness, and they can only be accessed in banks normally. Oh my god, I think I could have died there. That was really sketchy. With one inventory slot, I can't really make any use out of a looting bag. I can't physically deposit items into it, but if I keep it open with this open option, everything I pick up will instantly go into the bag, including the big bones in the graveyard. I think I may have just found the singular use for a looting bag on an account like this. Seven bones in the bag currently. Obviously, I can't withdraw these. It's impossible. Yes, we have a full bag. Let's get out of here. Let's book it out of here. Okay, so now I want to make it all the way over to the Chaos Altar, hopefully without dying. Anyone can hit me for anything, and I will just instantly die. Okay, we made it. So now if we destroy the bag, everything should drop onto the floor. Oh my god. This saves me so much time. I mean, it, it's still gonna be like six hours. It's gonna be like a six plus hour grind, but it, it still saves me like nine hours. It's not gonna be 15 hours anymore. This is literally the only scenario that a looting bag is useful for on this account. That's pretty insane. 20 prayer on our first trip. Let's get back out there. Now that I have to hunt for a new looting bag every single time I want an inventory of bones, I should get some decent combat stat upgrades from this. So yes, we got one. You can see the levels I've been getting in the chat. It's taken me a little while to get this one. The run back to the boneyard can definitely be a little sketchy, I'm not gonna lie. This was my home for the next six hours, assuming everything goes smoothly. The higher my prayer gets, the higher my combat level gets, opening up the range of players that can attack me. Get him. Stumbled across a fight. Yes, my friends, 37 prayer, my first overhead unlocked. Protect from magic. I don't know if it's gonna be useful in keeping me alive in the wilderness, but I will never be able to outlast or survive any kind of attack. <laughs> so, which kind of sucks because the boss that we're gonna be killing is also in the wilderness. Oh shit. No. No way, dude. One arrow, that's it? I instantly just get clapped and teleported. That's gonna be about a 20 minute setback. I hope he enjoys the big bones cause that's, that's all he's getting. Oh, I lost my training shield. I didn't get a new training shield. Iron scimitar acquired, baby. The final stretch, one more prayer to unlock. I was gonna say this is a big one, but every single overhead is extremely important. So but I, it's a big one though. It's, it's, it's a big one to unlock, okay? Let me say it. Still got a few hours to go to unlock protect from melee. What? What is happening? Who are you? You're level 25. Are you kidding me? I was already on my way out. Where did he come from? I am already six hours deep into this and I still have like two trips to go. So it's actually going to be closer to like seven hours to finish off 43 prayer. I actually can't wait to be done with this. I was so close on my last trip that I decided to just bury some bones to finish this up. I'm so excited. 43 prayer. I can do anything. This time I can really do anything now. All three overhead prayers unlocked on an account that has one inventory slot so this means like seven times more than it would okay 27 times more than it would on any other account it's finally time to start putting this plan in action baby let's do it i mean that's one way to get to Lumbridge, I guess. It's time to enact Operation How Do I Train Magic? I desperately need to train magic. It's the only way. I have a confession to make. I kept something from you. There is a way to buy something from a shop with one inventory slot. As long as you have the exact amount of gold something is priced at, 
the item will actually replace your stack of gold. This gets a little complex because if you happen to go over the amount you need, even by one coin, you have to drop your entire cash stack and start over. You need the exact amount of GP, no more, no less, which brings me to the plan. An air staff costs 1500 coins on the dot in Zaf's staff shop in Varrock. Air spells are the only combat spells in the entire game that require just two runes to cast. So if I have an air staff giving me infinite air runes, all I need is to fill my one inventory slot with mind runes and I can cast. I am become airbender. All I need now is 1500 coins on the dot to begin my magic journey. You might be thinking, well, just go to the stronghold of security. That'll give you 2000 coins. No, you silly person. Then I'll be stuck with 2000 coins in my inventory for eternity. If I go over 1500, it's game over, okay? First step, I'm gonna get five thieving so I can go steal a cake. I can't really hold food in my inventory, but I, for what I wanna do, I need at least one piece of food, I feel like. Boom, five thieving. Okay, let's make our way back over to Edgeville. I don't need all of that. Look at all the coins on the ground. Would not be surprised if there's someone waiting. Okay, <laughs> we're good, we're good. Okay, actually, I just realized I made a mistake. I need a sharp weapon that I can hold in my hand so I can cut a web. I can't use a knife. I'm gonna have to buy this ax for 72 coins. That is not great. Okay, I have to find a way to get 72 coins exactly. Okay, I have a genius plan. How much does... <laughs> How much does this cake sell for to the shop? 20 coins? New moneymaker discovered? What? Okay, so three cakes will get me to 60 coins. Then I have to find a way to get 12 on the dot. And I know how to do it. Yes, this is brilliant. I have to juggle the GP on the ground. So we'll, we'll keep the 20 coins over there. As long as no one comes in and grifts my coins. Another successful cake sale. One final cake and we're up to 60 GP now. Yes, I knew there was a man up here. We drop the coins and I just have to land four successful pickpockets. I didn't fail a single time. Let's go. There we go. 72 coins on the dot. We love it. Mission accomplished. Now I can get the iron axe. Then we go steal another cake and we can head back into the wilderness because I have a plan. I have one cake. That's my lifeline in the wilderness right now. Uh, also, that's what the iron axe was for. We got to slash the web. Now I just need to traverse my way over to the lava maze. Richard Tape is running. He's running to the lava maze. Richard tape. Richard tape has been deployed into the lava maze. His mission, retrieve two items of incredible value. The cake is really just for an emergency if I am close to dying, but I really should be fine with protect from melee. Item number one spotted, the staff of earth. Gonna have to walk around to get it. Earth staff acquired, we need one more thing before we leave. There it is, the steel plate body. I just have to temporarily drop my iron axe here. Now you might notice both of these items are equipable, so literally perfect for an account like this. As long as I can get these back safely, I can probably sell them for pretty close to 1500 GP and then just top off whatever I don't have. If this is more than 1500 GP, well, that's gonna be a very, very big shame. Okay, the grand reveal. Earth Staff sells for 600 coins. Now, if we unequip the plate body, steel plate body sells for 800 coins, so that's 1400 in total. I could sell both items for more to their respective shops. If I sell them to the staff shop or the plate body shop, they will buy for more. Ooh, steel plate body sells for 1200 here, but that doesn't really work because I'll have too much. I have to actively seek less money for what I'm trying to sell. I know what I must do. Let's sell the earth staff. That is 600 coins. Unequip the steel plate body. This is 800 coins. And we're gonna sell the iron axe, which is the key to everything because that's 22 coins. Keep that number in mind. That iron axe was 22 coins, which means if I pickpocket a man exactly 26 times, I should get 1500 coins on the dot. Let me just make sure I don't accidentally screw this up. Is that it? Yes, 1500 coins, baby. We can go buy an air staff. I'm so excited to own something on this account that actually means anything. <laughs> air staff, exactly 1500. Yes, thank you very much. We are now the proud owner of a staff of air and I have seven magic XP. So we need to go change that. Let's do it. That's 30 mind runes, 30 air strikes. Oh my God, it's so weird being able to cast a spell on this account. Two magic, time to retire. Mind runes are now officially our limiting factor. The magic tutor can give me 30 30 every half an hour, but that's just not a good plan, which is where our discovery from much earlier comes into play. I have a feeling that's gonna be really important. That's that's actually such a good discovery. Three magic. There's also this mind rune spawn here, which is definitely worse. It's only one instead of six, but it is safe. I'm gonna hop around here for a bit while I wait for another magic tutor cooldown.
collected 76 mind runes plus the 30 that I'll get from this. That puts me at 106. It's time to head back into the wilderness, onward to the mind rune spawn. No more wasting time. Mind rune spotted. So this is the spot. I can literally just safe spot this skeleton while I wait for the respawn. This is amazing, actually. Okay, so that was about 45 seconds for it to respawn. I mean, that's pretty good still. I can sit here, I can safe spot, and every 45 seconds I get to restore six mind runes to the pile. So magic is how I'm going to be killing this boss. And my goal right now is 17. That unlocks Windbolt. Windbolt has a max hit of nine over airstrikes too. So I think that's pretty good. Just a casual 350% DPS increase. No worries, no worries. Obviously the only problem with that is instead of mind runes, I'm going to be needing chaos runes and those are going to be much harder to obtain. Eight magic, nine magic, 11 magic, 12 magic, 13 magic. Normally the most important magic level you get for a long time, but I can't ever cast fire strike. 14 magic, 15 magic, baby. 16, not a single person doubted me and I did it anyway. 17 magic, wind bolts unlocked. 350% DPS increase unlocked. I'm gonna head over near the moss giants because I have... What am I supposed to say to that? Okay, we got the air staff back. That's really all that I cared about. I was a little worried. This is where I wanted to go before I was brutally murdered by a skeletal dog. Look at these spawn points for chaos runes. I think there's six spawns in total here and I can just run in between them and just start gathering a bunch of chaos runes. Now you might be wondering, why am I collecting chaos runes? And that's the question of the video. You may have heard of him. You may love him. You may hate him. The crazy archeologist. Why do we want to kill him? Well. That's a great question. I have two answers for you. Believe it or not, the Amulet of Power is the best amulet I can get in the game. I'm serious, I've thought about it. Every other amulet requires more than one inventory slot to obtain, making the Power Amulet the best amulet I will ever get on Richard Tape. And the Crazy Archaeologist drops it at a one in 18 rate. Having that Amulet of Power for the Fire Cape would be incredible. I'm not gonna lie, it's a long shot. It's a one in 18 and the kills are going to be insanely rough. I have 17 hit points and 17 magic and no other gear besides a staff. But no one ever said this was gonna go smoothly. The other answer is I can get a fedora. It would be really cool to get that, so. I'm gonna collect 120 chaos runes. That's the goal right now, and that should be enough to get a kill if I do everything perfectly. I'm not sure, honestly. But we're gonna go for 120 runes, and we're gonna give it a crack and just see what happens. Okay, do we think 115 chaos runes is enough to kill the crazy archaeologist? I also have no no food or prayer pots for these kills, so I have to make sure I'm prayer flicking and that I don't take any damage at all. And we're gonna have to hope that Wind Bolt is enough to kill a level 204 boss. There he is. That man holds our entire fate in his hands. Give me the amulet. Oh my god, instantly off the bat. Reign of knowledge. <gasps> oh my god, what is that? How did he split it like that? Okay, bad first impression, but I do know what I'm doing, I promise. The problem, <laughs> the problem is I can only afford one more mistake because I have no food and 10 HP. I really have to be perfect with these prayer flicks. If I miss even a single one, I am risking death at all times. And then as soon as he does, yep, as soon as he does reign of knowledge, I need to be ready to move around. That's when I'm gonna be losing prayer points. So far, it's really not looking good. I'm really not doing much damage. I <laughs> oh my god. I've used 30% of my runes and he has 80% health left. I don't think this is happening. Yeah, that seals it for me. Well, we got him to 70% health and I have 36 runes left. So <laughs> basically not even remotely close. Um, I guess the plus 10 magic bonus is just not cutting it. I was splashing a lot there. After this attempt, I decided to quickly do the math on just how inaccurate I was during the fight. Turns out 17 magic is not good. I have a 29% chance to hit, but interestingly enough, with just two more magic levels that I got during the fight, this went up to almost 32%. If I want to get this kill, I'm definitely going to have to get stronger. I'm going to head upstairs in the monastery and grab some monk robes. This should help a lot with prayer conservation. Prayer points will drain a lot slower now. Not that that was really the issue, but I have, I'm literally wearing nothing. I might as well get literally anything to help me at all. I'm going to grab my very first slayer task because I want to get 15 slayer. Let's see what we get. 44 wool is my first task. I mean, that's not bad. I can go do that. I can go 
go to the uh, stronghold of security and do that. I'm gonna take a little detour with the Edgeville lever. I think it's about time we got an upgrade. At least I thought I was going for an upgrade. This was the plan. I was gonna go to the Ardoin Monastery to kill imps. They drop wizard hats for magic bonus and they also drop these beads. If you collect all four beads, you can complete the imp catcher quest and receive an amulet of accuracy. Not as good as the amulet of power, but it's pretty decent. So yeah, I ran around and just bashed all these imps for like 30 minutes. 38 imps later, we got our wizard hat plus 12 magic bonus now. That's right. Crazy archaeologist is actually sweating as we speak. All that only to realize that you can't give him the beads one by one. You need all four at once to complete the quest. This is the worst game I've ever played, I think. So I made my way back over to the chaos rune spawns in the wilderness and I started collecting. I know it's kind of crazy, but I think I'm literally just going to sit here and collect a thousand chaos runes. Uh, I'm just going to run between spawn to spawn to spawn and I'm going to collect a thousand of them because I want 41 magic. There's literally no other way for me to get bulk runes. I, oh my God. And I got hit a six, of course. I don't know how long this is going to take me, but I'm assuming several hours. So I'll see you then. We're up to 468. I may be the first person to ever collect this many runes from these spawns. I feel like they are untouched otherwise. 715 checking in. 809. 900. One more. One more. There we go. 1000 chaos runes, baby. <laughs> I spent three and a half hours collecting chaos runes today. <laughs> what is wrong with me? Well, I am locked and loaded, baby. Let's go spend these chaos runes. Just finished up the Varrock Museum mini quest because I'm trying to get 15 Slayer and this is just gonna put me straight to nine. So I figured, well, why not do it? It's like five minutes. And just like that, baby, nine Slayer, nine Hunter. The Hunter is useless to me. I'll never be able to train that skill, but we've arrived at our very first Slayer task. It's actually gonna be really fast because I'm using a Wind Bolt on level 14 Wolves. And that's our slayer task done you'll actually you can see all the levels in the chat it's been uh pretty eventful 27 spiders is my next task i actually think i have a good idea for this one these spiders are super high level so i should only have to kill like a couple of them to get 15 slayer plus they have really nice drops so 29 magic just like that 15 slayer we are out of here 600 chaos runes left over also 30 magic right now the whole reason i wanted 15 slayer was to unlock banshees they dropped two things that could really improve my gear but to kill them i need a pair of earmuffs Earmuffs cost 200 GP, so as usual, we have to find a way to get exactly 200 GP. Here's the play. I'm gonna put my Chaos Runes on this table. Tables increase the despawn timer to 10 minutes, so that's how long I have to make 200 GP. There is a bit of a problem with this. Pickpocketing will not get me to 200 GP exactly, but I honestly have no other options to make money around here. So gonna have to get a bit crafty here. How much can I sell my monk robe for? Okay, let's sell that. Let's see. 16 coins plus the 132 I have on the ground that gets me to 140. 48. Okay, here's the plan. This is gonna be 201 coins. It's it's not ideal, I know, but I have a plan. I'm gonna need to go upstairs. I'm gonna need to reset my chaos runes one final time here because we are about to book it to Varrock. It's time for a marathon, baby. Let's go. And people said fortune tellers were useless, baby. We start the Demon Slayer quest. She takes one coin from us to do the fortune reading, and we now have exactly 200 coins to buy earmuffs. Oh, it's brilliant. It's so beautiful. Okay, super quickly, earmuffs purchased. There we go. I'm gonna have to probably drop my wizard hat because I mean, I don't know what else I can do with it I really need the earmuffs or else I just can't kill banshees. Yes, the chaos runes are still here. We're safe Okay, let's get on over to banshees. We have a lot of work to do The Banshees should be right over here. Yes, very nice. So what are we looking for from the Banshees? Well, two possible things. Both are a little rare, one much rarer than the other. The Air Battle Staff and the Mystic Gloves. The gloves are actually what I want the most, but either one of these would be a big upgrade to my current magic gear, and we have 600 Chaos Runes to try to get one or the other. <gasps> no way. <laughs> at it dude no way i've killed eight i've killed eight twisted banshees oh this does get a little awkward though i'm gonna have to juggle this i can't even equip it i i need 30 attack to wear a battle staff and i don't even have that i have to just juggle it on the ground until i use all of these chaos runes i mean i'm happy to do that and then we're gonna have to get 30 attack afterwards so i can wear it so fun fact battle staffs weren't always an upgrade for magic it was only after an update last year that the magic attack and defense bonuses got increased to plus 12 so now they're actually worth upgrading 
End of the road for the 1,000 chaos runes I collected. I'd like to say I'm sad, but I'm definitely not. I finally get to stop juggling this battle staff. There we go. I need to go get 30 attack for this thing. We made a lot of progress here, though. Almost 37 magic from those 1,000 chaos runes. And we got the battle staff upgrade. Obviously, no misted gloves. Both items were a long shot. I really didn't deserve to get either one of them, so... Even the fact that I got the battle staff is a massive win here. Okay, here's the plan. I'm gonna table my battle staff. If someone finds it, you're dead to me. We're gonna sell our current staff of air for 600 coins. I'm retiring from magic temporarily. And I saw this black sword here. It costs 624. So the money that I got from selling the air staff is like pretty much perfect. All I need to do is get eight more pickpockets here. That'll give me 24 coins. Okay, there we go. That should be 24. And now we take this back over to the sword shop. The black short sword is not a great weapon, um, but it'll do. One thing that's really cool about the battle staff, making it maybe even one of the most valuable things I could get on an account like this, its melee stats are actually equivalent to an adamant longsword. So it's both a melee weapon and a magic weapon in one, which is kind of perfect for this account. Because now if I don't have any runes, I'm not completely useless. I can actually bash things and it's pretty good. So I'm revising my statement. I'm actually really glad I got it instead of the mystic gloves. Ah, the sweet stench of sand crab isle the main goal is obviously 30 attack at that point i'll be able to use the battle staff but i don't just want to beeline straight to 30 attack going back to what i said before where the battle staff actually makes melee kind of viable for me i don't really mind investing some time into making my melee stats at least a little decent so i think i'm gonna go for 30 attack strength and defense that's probably gonna be a few hours but i don't really mind guys chill out i just got 30 attack everyone should be happy right now everyone should be clapping i have the equivalent of an adamant long sword at my fingertips here in staff form. And look at that extra plus two magic attack. We love to see it. Not done yet though. I'm gonna go train my strength and defense to 30. He says, and he does. 30 attack, strength, and defense. It only took a few hours. With that done, it's time to go visit an old friend, the Karend Library. I'm already gonna have to risk going into the wilderness to fight crazy archaeologists, but I'm so much higher combat now that someone could easily kill me at the chaos rune spawns. So I'm just gonna get 41 magic here. It should take like an hour or so. The main benefit to using the chaos runes as I get hit points XP as well. This is just straight magic XP, but it should be fun. So I get a book of arcane knowledge every time I give these guys a book that they're looking for, and it's pretty decent magic XP. There's 37. By the way, update on the time played. We're up to 22 hours almost. It's crazy how much slower the progress is on an account like this. 38 magic, 39 magic, 40 magic, one level to go. The crazy archaeologist is absolutely sweating right now because we just hit 41 magic. I can now count Cast Wind Blast. All I need are death runes, and I am literally good to go. So I decided to do the math for you. Here on the left is what our accuracy and damage used to be. On the right is our current build accuracy and damage after everything we've done. You could say there's a little bit of a difference now, and we should be able to get the kill. So I just minigame teleported over to Castle Wars because we do have a way to collect death runes on this account. In fact, it's the only way to collect death runes on this account. There is one spawn of a single death rune all the way south in Feldip Hills. There it is, baby, the trophy. All we have to do is world hop like 130 times and we should be good to go. I think I need to lose aggression first though. All right, I should be losing aggro in literally three seconds here. I'm just gonna pick this one up. I might be able to squeeze in two kills with 100 runes. I'm not really sure yet, but we're gonna have to come back here pretty much every like one or two kills to get more death runes. It's gonna be a long process us to get this power amulet. I don't have very high hopes, but God, I hope I get it. I really hope I get it. All right, this is gonna be the last one. I take 140 death runes. I'm gonna hope that's enough. It's time, baby. Let's go over to Clan Wars. We have a fight to commence. I am a little sketched out because level 60s are gonna be able to attack me, and if I die, I lose the air battle staff, so I'm a little worried, but it's gonna be fine. Oh, damn it. I forgot my wizard hat. Oh, well. Okay, I'm just gonna go for it anyway. Oh, instantly a 12. This is gonna... Oh, my God. In a back-to-back -back 13. This is going great. You can already see the difference. I mean, I'm mostly hitting now, whereas back then I was just mostly splashing. Okay, that, that was a bit of an error. Literally, as long as I don't make any major mistakes, I think we should be good. These hits are incredible. They're so consistent. It's beautiful. No, I got dragged into melee range. Okay, well now I can't really make any more mistakes. I'm, I'm in KO range now if I miss a prayer flick. Is that it? 
Yes, let's go, baby. Uncut emeralds and sapphires as the first drop. It's completely useless, but I didn't really use that many runes. That was 50 runes for a kill. That's so good. First successful kill. As long as I regen my stats every single time, I can definitely withstand. I mean, I could have maybe stayed there and gotten another kill, but the margins are a little too tight. I'm gonna need the spawn of two individual coins there, Mr. Pirate. Thank you very much. We are buying back the wizard hat. No more earmuffs, baby. What? Oh my, oh, there goes 10 HP for this kill. <gasps> oh my God, okay, it's a little sketchy now. Eight HP, not good. I don't think I need to prayer flick unless I get a little unlucky here. Here we go, that was a big one. Dead? Yes. Oh my God, I got oh, it, I got no, it. No. no way, how lucky am I? How perfect is that? On the second kill, the best amulet in the game for me. Oh my God, so perfect. Two entire kills. That's it. <laughs> One in 18 doesn't even matter, dude. I was so ready to just sit here, recharge death runes for like the next day and a half hunting this damn amulet. Didn't even matter. Second kill. <laughs> With the power amulet achieved, Richard could do anything now. I wonder what he'll do next. What are you doing? Are you just gonna sit there or are you gonna subscribe? Click on the video that's next to me. <laughs> that looks good. <laughs> what, are you gonna watch it or not?